All right, welcome everybody to Disc Review. Today is going to be a very special episode um, because we have David Day, the foremost expert in scare no-nos from Horror Movie Talk here. Um, and we're going to be talking about Slipknot, which I think is going to be um, a really good crossover because, you know, there's lots of horror movie fans who are also fans of Slipknot. So, um, David, why don't you uh, say hello and talk about Horror Movie Talk for a second? Hello, and and thank you so much for having me, Max. I've been looking forward to doing this. As soon as it's, it was kind of kismet, I've known you for a long time. You um, did the first piece of like uh, of like significant um, user or, or I should say listener content for our show, Horror Movie Talk. Um, you did our uh, what was our intro for a couple of years and is now our outro. And so I've known you for a long time and I just, I, I just have appreciated um, everything you've done because uh, you've helped us on and off with other stuff too, with them, uh, with all that. And then when you said, um, I, do you know anything about, you know, we'd been talking about music for a couple months and, and well, actually, I guess a couple of years and, and you were, you always knew that I listened to metal. And then recently when you said, do you know, do you like Slipknot? I was like, oh yes. <laughs> like I like Slipknot was like one of the big turning points in my, in, in my um, music listening and taste making, uh, uh, you know, uh, life moments. So when you were like, I was, what about the, their self-titled album? I was like, yes. So yeah. The, the, um, and I'm, I, I'm sure that many horror fans do like metal. I actually, I, I know they do. But um, anyway, this one is, uh, this one's definitely, probably one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is one of the most influential albums in metal to to date. It's. Um, I. I mean, we'll talk about it as we get into like some of the songs. But I was just listening to um, the new "I Prevail" track um, that came out a couple of days ago. And mm -hmm. um, immediately, as soon as the breakdown hit, I was like, this is the most Slipknot thing. Like, it's so obvious that, um, I mean, in a good way, I think that so many bands take from them these days. Oh, I've said this. I've said that people hate, for some reason, people hate this concept. But Slipknot created, was, was like low-key the godfather of like, everything that's going on in metal today and everything that's been going on ever since 1999 like mm. and and people don't people won't be, i think they don't like it be, i think they don't like when people say that because people associate slipknot with new metal and new metal is um kind of like dirty or like other or like mm -hmm. not like this this redheaded stepchild of of metal but it uh, Slipknot is transcendent in in my opinion of of a lot of genres. It's obviously not death metal. It's obviously not black metal. It's 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 got a lot of new metal components, but like so much about it is super unique. I'd almost put it in like this this other category of extreme metal. That's just like it's something else. You can't really classify this easily in the like. But yeah, Slipknot is the birth of uh, is well not necessarily the birth but like the refining of metalcore and of deathcore and of all these like subgenres of death metal and um yeah they're they're big 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 influencers in in the metal scene and have been ever since that first album came out yeah you know i these days i'm not as much into new metal like i I, I don't like it that much, but I would be lying if I didn't say that um, new metal kind of made me, you know, like it, when I was growing up, um, you know, I, I was actually born in 1999, which is the year this album came out. And um, after that, you know, the whole early 2000s was filled with new metal and um, things like uh, Linkin Park and just yeah. anything that mixed um, hip hop and metal together, like that was my jam. And um, I think that that's really influenced what I listen to today. Almost everything I listen to today is either hip hop or metal. And so, uh, you know, even though it, 
the tracks on this album that we're going to be talking about, the ones that are more new metal are the ones that I usually kind of skip, to be honest. Um, but I, I think that it's an important genre because it, it pretty much uh, birthed a whole new generation of uh, kids who liked metal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you think new metal, you think corn and Limp Biscuit, And for me, I, to a lesser extent, um, Slipknot. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's... It, and again, like, I, I really don't, I really don't, I mean, I get how Slipknot like kind of falls into, because there's, they have so many crossovers with new metal, you know, they got the sampler guy, you know, they got a DJ in there and then, and then there's a bunch of, uh, it's like angst, like a lot of Slipknot's like themes are like angst, um, and depression and that kind of thing. So in that manner, it kind of slips into new metal as well. But, um, but everywhere else, it just kind of, it just kind of feels like its own thing to me, especially this, the first album for sure. And then like Iowa and, and volume three, they both feel kind of like their own thing. And then I, I, I kind of lost track of Slipknot since, since those first three. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, they're hugely influential. I mean, right out the gate they were influential i mean as soon as this album dropped they got onto ozfest like the biggest metal show that toured around the world or yeah of the of, of 1999 and or 2000 i guess it was 2000 ozfest mm -hmm. yeah um would you so would you say that this is your favorite slipknot album then oh yeah yeah without a doubt yeah this is there's so many things that are crazy about this album to me. Like I, I really, I, I got a Wikipedia something just because of um, a name that I, I, I can't remember, but this, um, this album is so incredibly raw. Uh, like the uh, yeah. Ross Robinson was the producer on this one and the things he did to get like this live performance sound out of out of these guys on a studio album it is crazy and the end result is like this super emotional raw like i think the problem with a lot of like with a lot of like real hardline like black metal or death metal or you know any any album is that it just feels kind of sterile you know, mm -hmm. it feels like guys in a studio and this feels like, I don't know. This just feels like raw emotion. Like it just feels, it just feels like guys who are, who have, have n nothing to lose and uh, are just made of emotion and hope. And like, it, like you can hear, you can hear so much angst in, in Corey uh, and like, there's so much percussion going on. Like, this is such a crazy album. I don't really, there's not many albums that stand up to this, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Like as far as how they made it goes, I'm pretty sure I heard that their producer would like throw stuff at them while they were like trying to record just to make them have to like move around and, uh, um, give it more of that live, uh, feel where it's like, it's raw. And a lot of the music today that I listened to as a teenager, like um, Beartooth is like a big one where people point out and say, oh, that was recorded super raw, super, um, you know, unfiltered. Uh, but it, it was that way because they were trying to be like Slipknot, you know, it's mm -hmm. and, and they'll be honest about that. And I think that lots of bands who go for that more raw sound will be very honest about that, that they're just trying to replicate what Slipknot did in this album, particularly because um, even though I would say that there are Slipknot albums that I like better than this one, they definitely lose some of that raw emotion after this one and after Iowa. Yeah, I, I've heard the same thing. Uh, so going back to the first thing you said, um, I've heard the same thing that they've done a lot. They did a lot in terms of... Um, like throwing stuff at them and then not cleaning up after themselves. Like 
like performing, like, tr like doing things to make it feel live to them. So they'd perform in the masks and that kind of thing. And which is rough. I imagine that's incredibly rough. Every interview I've ever seen with these guys, they're all in masks all the time. And that's just, I mean, it's in the hot sun, but so if this isn't your favorite one, it, it must be Iowa. No, see, what's I, your favorite um... album? I, I like this album a lot and I like Iowa, but I think that they miss a little bit of um, dynamics. It, they're just kind of like, it, it kind of just feels like one tone all the way through, which um, a little bit of that is great. But I, what I like about some of their later albums is that they have ups and downs. They have, you know, um, really heavy songs and then they have more emotional songs that are like softer, um, even though they all have that like grit to it. Um, I, I feel like um, albums like The Grey Chapter just have a, a little bit more of that roller coaster feel um, that I mm. look for. But I, I do have to admit that this one in particular has the most emotion in it, especially as we get into songs like Scissors um, towards the end. Um, but why don't we start talking about these tracks here? Because there's kind of a, a good number of them. So we don't want to waste too much time. Um, but the first track is, I guess I'll read this number. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, 7426170027, which is... Yeah, that old ditty. Yeah. <laughs> Not really a song, but an introduction. Um, the first track, at least. And um, I believe that number comes from the barcode of their first demo, which is kind of a, uh, you know, an interesting thing to throw in there but it, it just contains one line repeated over and over with different modulations of um, someone from a documentary about the Manson family. Um, and I, it says, uh, the whole thing I think is sick. And yeah. it, it's got, you know, this static playing over it and it's, it's very creepy, which is, you know, it sets off the album at a really good tone, I think, because it's a creepy album. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, I've heard, I've listened to this album all, the, 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 okay, so I've listened to this album all the way through hundreds of times, um, which is rare for me. I don't, I, I like albums that you can listen to all the way through, um, and this is the perfect setup because it's just, it's just so gross and gritty just to hear someone saying the whole thing I think is sick. And then they're like messing with it. You know, they're mm -hmm. messing with the modulation and the speed of how she, how fast she's saying, saying it, the whole thing I think is sick. The whole thing I think is sick. And then it gets real deep and weird. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, almost it's like good... they're making fun of her. Yeah. Kind of it's, it's gross. And, and you can find the video of her saying this um, from, uh, yeah, from I guess the uh, the Manson family documentary from the seventies or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's on YouTube. Yeah, um, and then that song leads into "Sick" spelled S I C, which um, this is where we get our first ta uh, taste of what Slipknot actually is. You know, this song is considered a fan classic, and it's one of my favorites on the album. Um, I love that it doesn't have a chorus. It just kind of moves forward continuously without ever looping back um, to a core melody. It's loud and angry, and uh, th that's kind of what all the songs are on the album. But I think that this one is, um, it stands out for how loud and angry it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's a strong start. It's got like this real stompy sort of groove to it. A lot of these songs have a have a have a like a thick groove to them, you know. And uh, Joey Jordanson is, I mean, is fabulous. Their bassist, I I'm, I can't recall his name, is is pretty good too. They, they, I think they get a lot of shit from people who look at a band with nine members and go. What are they really doing? And there's some like the, the the two extra percussionists. There's some corniness to that. There's some bravado and like show to it. But all in all, like all that extra percussion adds so many layers. And like you said, there's no uh, there's no what chorus to this. Instead, you get like these zingy 
one-liners that like just stick in your head like fuck this shit i'm sick of it or you're going down this is a war like it just he just says it and and you can remember that every single time you're like fuck this shit you know (laughs) yeah this one definitely has some of the best one-liners i think um this i mean this is probably one of the songs that i've listened to the most um because i i've listened to this album quite a few times all the way through but um I, there's ones that I, I go back to a lot. And, and this is one of them, uh, mainly for the vocals and the way the instrumental almost moves like a wall of sound, you know, the, the yeah. bass, the guitar, the drums, those things are all hitting at the same time, making it just um, very powerful, I think. Uh, and, and that kind of transitions when we go into the next song, which is Eyeless, also kind of the same type of feel here um i used to jam this song all the time in high school this this song is more start and stop with the way um it kind of it it has more of a structure i'd say than the last song uh it has chorus like things but still not really um anything resembling like there the singing is very minimal it's mainly screaming here uh, the best part of me for sure is that breakdown portion though um where it starts it's almost like fast rap screaming not uh really either or it's kind of a little bit of both and it's just so nasty with that riff um yeah i mean this is this is like this is one of the best i this maybe this is probably i i think the, my favorite track on on the album um it's like super overproduced and exaggerated percussion like there's so much percussion on this and then i think th- that the at the end um when he says look me in my brand new eye motherfucker and you know it's the, and then like everything stops for motherfucker or everything stops for fucker and uh and then you have a breakdown on the other side of that that scream that motherfucker is uh, that's the that's the best uh vocal scream ever recorded on a metal album ever there's you can't convince me uh i i've listened i mean i've listened to metal my entire life and i've i've never heard anything so full of emotion and anger as that that uh, that's the that is like the pinnacle like for me the reason I, the biggest reason I listen to metal is, is the vocals. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this, in the, uh, th- that, that end breakdown on, on this eyeless is just great. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of effect he's got going on his voice because it's, it's not, I, I think that something Slipknot does and a lot of bands do this where they're trying to sound raw is they actually manipulate their voice in a way that, is like artificial raw where you know the average listener will be like wow that that was recorded very like nothing put over that but he's got something over his voice that makes it sound like even more grainy than it would naturally and it do you think so yeah oh yeah it's like um i mean the only reason i can tell is because i i feel like i have effects that do pretty much the same thing on my um on where how i record um I, I'm not saying that they, you know, that that's carrying the way it sounds at all. I think that sure. it was his emotion and, and the way he did it because uh, Corey Taylor, their singer, um, he's got to be one of the best out there. You know, he, the way he does it, people don't do it that way. I, I will fight back a little bit because I, a lot, I've listened to a lot of interviews with Corey. And so when he before he got asked to join Slipknot, he was he had his own band, Stone Sour, which is now still a band. Um, but they, you know, they when they approached him, uh, they were like, "You want to come do it?" And he was like, "Yeah." Uh, well, after a week, he was like, "Yeah." And then um, when they started recording this, like he didn't, he had never sung like this. He had never he'd never screamed before. Um, and he just, I remember in an interview, some interview that I listened to with him, he was like, uh, it took me a long time to figure out, like, uh, it, it was a bat, like a not fun process. Cause he didn't, he didn't go to any vocal coach or anything like that to learn how to scream. 
So it was just a bunch of trial and error and him blowing out his voice for weeks, trying to get it to click. So when I hear this, I, I go, I don't know. Is this just a guy who really doesn't know how to scream and is just like giving it everything? It could be because it was, it was not long between when he joined the band and when they recorded this, it was pretty, pretty quick. I mean, that's, that's for sure got a huge impact on the way it sounds. I think when I say like, he's got something over his voice, I mean, very, very minimal, um, Mm. uh, what I'm hearing on that part in particular, that ending section is kind of like um, uh, when, you know, when you're recording a pop song, you want there to be no sound coming in the mic other than the voice. That's why they go in those vocal booths that cut out all room noise. Um, there's no uh, grainy filtering sounds. This sounds like they purposefully left that in, um, that room noise, mm. because of how busy it sounds when he lets out those screams it does sound real busy and it Mm -hmm. oh man it just it's it's one of the best moments in all of metal i think it's really great for sure um so let's move on to the next track which is wait and bleed i think that this song is criminally short it comes (laughs) in at uh under two and a half minutes but something about its brevity i think makes it also kind of charming to me it kind of feels like constantly being kicked in the teeth the way it's just go, go, go until it's completely over. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was their single for the, for the album and it's, I mean, it's a real trite kind of like, uh, like wait and bleed. Like this is so 1999 and, and it doesn't have like, you know, it doesn't have like a real, theme except kind of like fuck you you know like uh it's is real groovy um and it has a lot of crescendos it, it or i should say it's one big crescendo into more and more and loud loudness um it just gets louder and louder um let me see i have something written down here um a big feature on this album is the visceral anger in the performance even down to the production it seems like everything is so yeah i already said that um yeah it, yeah it, i said all this stuff but um i don't know for me i it, i don't th- th- think that this song is too short i this song embarrasses me a little bit i love the song but i also kind of go okay you know <laughs> I think, okay, when I first heard this song, I must have been, I don't know, I was in high school when I first heard this, which is crazy because it came out so much uh, sooner than when I got in high school. But, uh, well, to be honest, I wasn't allowed to listen to music like this until I uh, went out to the store and just bought this uh, CD myself. But um, when I first heard this, I had no idea that you could scream in a way that made it sound like you were also singing a little bit. Like, um, the verses especially he he's screaming the whole time but the the notes kind of move up and down you know in a in a melodic way and i was like i can't even believe you can do that like that's crazy to me Uh, so (laughs) i think in in a way this song it it resembles it resembles a pop song in its structure and it and in the way kind of it moves but it's still got that heavy grit to it i mean it's um it's, you know, it's very dark and uh, it's not the darkest as we'll see as we get on throughout. Uh, there's some songs on here that are so, they go so above and beyond what this song accomplished, but this song has the most uh, streams, I think on Spotify by a large margin, like uh, 200 million versus some of these only have 10 million, you know? So it's uh, definitely a very popular one. So let's talk about surfacing. And this is, I'm excited to see what you say about this because this is where the album trails off a little bit for me. I think that surfacing is uh, just so nihilistic and world Haiti that I I just can't relate to it that much. Um, Especially the chorus when it kind of just, I don't know, it almost seems a little cringy the way it's like so anti everything. Yeah, yeah. I love well. First of all, I love the turntables on this track. I love the turntables on all uh, and all the sampling on this whole album. 
Uh, I will never apologize for that. Um, I I don't I I'm. I think it. I I think the more interesting stuff I hear, the better. And that I come to music for interesting shit. Uh, uh, if you're gonna be like, mm, well, it's not a real death metal because blah 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 blah, then I'm not really interested. Like I just want to hear cool stuff. Um. So the more cool stuff you put in your shit, great. As for like the content, yeah, it's super angsty. Um. Like. Okay, so I went. I went to their to this tour in two thousand wow. uh, on uh, at Oddest Fest two thousand. I was in I don't know, seventh or eighth grade, probably. Whew, yeah, probably eighth grade, and um, you know, uh, uh, Slipknot was the headliner uh, along. I mean, along obviously with Ozzy and Slayer, um, and I had a rough childhood. Uh, growing up and so like this is where one of the this is one of the roads that you go down if it potentially if you have a rough childhood is this super angsty and like a lot of these guys had real rough childhoods um cory i i know definitely did um and so to me this is just like this song servicing just brings all that angst back and actually when when I was feeling that angst back then, I felt like all righteous in it, you know, like, oh yeah, fuck it all, you know, but now hearing it now, it's all, um, it's very emotional um, in a different way. It makes me feel real sad um, because I remember very viscerally how angry I was um, back then. And, uh, and I remember, you know, I think back to how much time I wasted being just so angry. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a, a, a real nihilistic track, but, um, a lot of metal songs do this to me. Like ones that I remember from my childhood will make me like tear up, um, because I just remember, oh, wow, I was so angry. You know, I'll just, if they, if they bring me back to when I was angry, then it's just like, and surfacing is is one of those so yeah i mean uh i i won't go as far to say that like everything about my life has been perfect but i will say that i don't think i ever got to that point especially as a kid and so i think that that's what always turned me off about this song is i was like well i just i don't really feel that way yeah. um and um but i think that if you are feeling that way uh it's it's definitely good to have some sort of outlet like music that can kind of channel that in a way that's non-destructive because you know i think that pain can lead people to some really horrible places and um you know there's nothing that excuses uh doing horrible things but i think that pain leads a lot of people to uh that kind of place and i i think that music is something that helps especially kids to blow off some of that and feel like oh they feel the same way i do and that's cool and so i i appreciate it for what it is yeah no i i guess i never you know you you hear what you okay what you said is is super cliche and you hear it all the time which is like oh it's good to have kids have a but i've never really applied it to myself at all until just now <laughs> you know so <laughs> having that kind of perspective i'm like oh yeah i was like on the precipice of of you know falling off you know uh, of being you know of having bad things happening a lot uh and this kind of stuff helped me yeah definitely helped me uh go you know other people feel that i don't know if i i don't know if it was specifically that but in any in any event yeah i agree with you so the next song is Spit It Out. Uh, I'm kind of middle of the road on this one. I think that it's okay in what it does. It just doesn't stand out to me as much. It's got more of that uh, new metal feel. That, uh, that yeah. kind of, it, it, you know, this sound comes back a few times throughout the record where it's kind of just, um, uh, it's like a little bit of rap thrown in there. And it, it's, it, it's just not really my vibe. But I do, I mean, I think it sounds just fine instrumentally and it's from what i've heard this they wrote this song kind of 
uh, to, uh, as a way to retaliate against certain radio stations that were refusing to play their songs. Um, but yeah, what do you think about this one? Well, I'm interested in, uh, in what you just said. In what way was this a retaliation? Um, I think it was just them kind of, uh, I think the lyrics are about people who, uh, you know, don't like what they're doing. And they were kind of just saying, like, we're going to keep doing it anyways. And we want to, uh, you know, well, you know, maybe I have it wrong. What do you, what are your thoughts on it? Um, you know, I don't have strong thoughts about this. I agree with everything you just said. Uh, this is definitely the closest thing to rap the rap excuse to like box this into the new metal box. Um, uh, I will say that um, it always made sense to me up until a point uh, why, why metal wouldn't get play. You know, the craziest thing anybody ever heard on the radio um, at any real point in time was uh corn or metallica you'll sometimes you'll get slayer um uh you know like just real kind of like thrash kind of stuff was as far as anybody would play on the radio and i got that for terrestrial radio i listened to terrestrial radio for a long long time um but because it's just not a broad audience thing you know it's a niche niche audience thing and then also like it's all dealing with like death and destruction and usually explicit content, uh, you know, stuff. But when Sirius came out, um, to this day, they still don't have, like, there are so many, at, like, metal's popularity is bigger than it's ever been um, now. And there's still so few public um, places, uh, you know, or, uh, I don't know what you would call them. There, there are so few uh, uh, outfits that will play popular metal. It blows me away. Um, there aren't, there are no channels on Sirius XM that you'll hear, you know, anything other than new metal. New metal is as far as we'll go. There's still no outlets for death metal or black metal or uh, most of that stuff. No big ones anyway. So that's it's confusing to me. But um, so if it is if spit it out, is it like a jab at the radio? Well, then it still stands today because it's always confused me, um, you know, ever since things started getting um, more and more niche um, catering towards more and more people. You still don't have these outlets for for metal, which is kind of crazy to me. Something I think that's actually incredibly um, impressive about this song is um i don't know if you know this but this is the demo version the official version that they released is the demo version that they recorded um years before they actually put out their actual um debut album so they wrote and recorded this song like by themselves not in a studio and then when they were signed to a record label and given money to go record their um album they wanted to add this song to the album but they recorded it, I think, twice, and they were like, "It's just not as good as the as the demo." So they slapped the demo on there, and that's the official track. So I'll be done. I, I think that's crazy because we just um, a few a little while ago we reviewed um, Maroon 5's first album, which has got um, some really classic songs on there. But their tenth uh, year anniversary, they released their demos. And their demos were so bad, like just Ooh. so they were bad. And, and like they were the same songs, but recorded horribly. And like the structure was weird. And to, to have a band that actually knew what they were doing and recorded a demo that was actually good enough to go on the, the final studio album is unheard of. You know, again, like I, you Everybody has this, when you say Slipknot, everybody has this, you know, this snap judgment that they go, okay, you know, they, they have this, this idea in their mind. They think they know what's up. I don't think people really understand the kinds of savvy pros that these guys were from the beginning. 
Like Joey Jordanson was incredibly talented at at um, production and and having an ear, uh, you know, like and and all these guys knew that they they were like they had to get out of Iowa, you know, like they were and this is how they were going to do it. And like and so they took it real seriously from the beginning. Like uh, I, I I remember listening to an interview where Corey uh, was watching them and was like, wow, I need to be part of that band. Those guys are dialed in. They know what's up. Yeah, any any band that doesn't uh, treat their band, their music as like a business that needs to succeed, um, you know, they're never going to make it. And I, I think that that's why Slipknot has gone as far as they have because not only did they write good stuff and record good stuff, um, they created this whole atmosphere around their band that was marketable. Like, you know, they their live performances, their aesthetic, you know, the masks, everything went into creating and building this thing um, that was bigger than just songs. It's undeniable. It's, yeah, it was a movement. It was like, it was something that people could get behind um, you know, if you see at the same time, um, you know, I'm trying to think, of, let me see here. Um, if you see other bands and they're just some dudes, uh, getting up there and playing their guitars and it, you know, and they're, uh, they're playing their instruments. And I mean, if you saw death, um, at the same time in 1998, when they released the sound of perseverance, um, you, I, now death is, is a great band, but you just wouldn't, as a kid, you just, there would be nothing there to connect to. There's a bunch of middle, you know, to you as a kid, you're like, okay, some guys in their thirties and forties playing death metal. Okay. But when people saw Slipknot, it's like, holy shit, there's nine guys running around on stage and like. <laughs> Jordanson's like up on a up on a hydraulic drum set that raises above the and it goes upside down and he's like he's playing his solos and it, it was stuff no one had ever seen before and that's that is important that's huge especially when you're talking about something as like crazy and emotional as metal like how how aren't more bands finding some incredible gimmick or having more business sense um, to make themselves stand out. You know, I mean, black metal did it. <laughs> yeah. You know, on basically on the strength of the look, like the sounds garbage. No one's going to refute <laughs> that. You know, it's, it's all based on the premise of the look. So um, in your opinion, who has the best masks in the band? Oh, I mean, I love Corey's masks. Um, you know, that's that's a hard question because they're all um they change so frequently over time. And again, you know, I outside of like we, once you got into like 2005 or 6, I just kind of departed from listening sure. to new, new Slipknot really. Um not out of anything other than just being like I was I had moved on to other music. Um, but, um, I always liked Corey's, I can't think of, I can't think of the, I can't think of the names of some of them. I, I really liked Corey's and clown. I always loved to hate. I was like, ah, what a dick. Like, well, who would wear a clown mask? Like, okay. Like Gacy or what? I don't know. Like, I don't know what you're going for, but the fat guy wears the clown. Mask, I don't know. I felt, uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a strong opinion. You'd have to ask me 22 years ago. <laughs> I like the, um, I think it's Chris, the percussionist who has like the gimp mask with the long nose. That's so mm. funny to me. I can't get over it. And it, he's kept it true throughout all of the, he like every time they change masks, he just upgrades the same mask. Um, so I, I think that one is is great. Um, but as as far as like, you know, you just talked about clown and, uh, the next song that's that's perfect for um, 
the next song, which is Tattered and Torn, which I believe was wrote, written um, by Clown. And it's one of the scariest songs I've ever heard in my whole life. Wow. <laughs> this song, if I was driving on a road by myself at night and this song pulled up on my playlist, I would turn that shit off immediately because it is so creepy sounding. It's got like the, it sounds like a clown is chasing you through a funhouse maze. That's the sound that this one gives off. And also the lyrics are so dark. It's like talking about like cutting yourself up and like, oh man, it's, it's a, it's a ride for sure. I, I usually skip this one just because it's um, not very sonically pleasing. It's very dissonant and uh i don't know what do you think it's a dirge um this is this is the this is the turning point of the album a little bit right like um like the tattered and torn the album takes a like a turn for the even darker you know um and it's it really has like a dirge feel I, you know it's it's interesting that you bring up the lyrics because I almost never, ever listened to music for the lyrics. And it's not like I can't pick them out. I can pick it out, but it's like, it's just like another instrument to me. It's just, it's just an, like the voice is the instrument. I don't really care a whole lot about the words that are being spoken. So I can't say I've ever read the lyrics to them. Now I'm, I'm reading them and it's, yeah, it's, it's mildly upsetting to me right now. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, I will say that is, that's, that's an interesting thing that I've always, uh, that other people will bring up when we're talking about music and I'll just be like, I have nothing in common with you. I, I can't talk about the lyrics because I don't know them because it's the, the, I just want to hear the sound. Like I, the lyrics are kind of like, bleh. which I think it goes a long way to explain my obsession with metal in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, metal typically is, the focus is the sound of it. You know, the, the guitars, the drums, the screaming. Um, and I think that there's definitely a place for that. Like, you know, if I'm going to, a concert i'm not even you know i'm i'll listen to the lyrics on my own time i'm there for the sound i'm there mm -hmm. for the party experience and how you know the atmosphere and so i think that you know that's just fine to not even really care about lyrics i i love lyrics i i like reading lyrics of if i don't know the words to a song i'll immediately look it up and i'll read through the whole thing like i'm reading um, wow. a poem so it's it's just something I'm really into uh, but yeah this one's got some weird ones and uh, there's a couple others to come here that also have some some pretty dark stuff in them but the song after Tattered and Torn is Me Inside um, I've listened to this album a lot over the years uh, to be honest I usually skip this one it's it just doesn't have a great flow to me it's kind of like uh I, I didn't mention this before, but the song surfacing in the background, there's like this screeching guitar that like never lets up except for like a few places. Yeah. And this song also does that where it's like during the verses, there's just this guitar noise that's playing in the background. That's so unbearably high pitched. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't love this one. Yeah, this is, I mean, I, I love this album front to back. This is probably the most skippable song in the album. Um, uh, the only notes I have written for it are uh, crazy ape, because I always hear him saying, I can't, I can't remember. I don't even know what he said. Like, this is how uninterested I am with lyrics, but I, in, there's at some point he says crazy and it's followed up by some other word, but I, all I hear is crazy ape. Um, and then this one, this one is like the most metalcore song on the album because there's clean vocals. Um, yeah. and, and like, if I were to be kind of, um, snobby, it would be about clean vocals. Um, I'm not a fan in, 
I don't listen to metal to hear someone sing melodiously. Um, you can hear that anywhere. Um, and sure, it it can fit in nicely. Um, but you got to know the you got to know the track to put it on real well, like because otherwise, there's just a bunch of metal heads out there who are just gonna be like, mm, okay, you know, like, nah, you wanted to break out your singing voice for a minute, <laughs> like that's not what so, this is. So that's why you don't like Ice Nine Kills. I get it now. Okay, uh, that's a huge reason why I don't like Ice Nine Kills. I don't like I don't like metalcore in general because mm -hmm. because of the clean vocals um is it's somehow made so much more in, uh abrasive and horrible to me because okay let's say it's your birthday and someone's giving you a present and and it's like the thing you want is legos right you're like oh man i could do anything for a lego set and you like tear you like rip a little piece off the box and it's like, you see that it's like a, a box full of blocks and you're like, fuck yeah, Legos. And you go to rip the whole thing out. This is exactly what I wanted. And then you open it up and it's like mega blocks and you're like, fuck. <laughs> and it's somehow so much worse than, uh, it's so much more insulting than if it had just been a book, you know? At least a book is its own thing, but this is some shittier version of the thing that I really wanted, you know? Yeah. Um, so I really don't like clean vocals in, in metal, generally speaking. This album gets away with it um, because I guess I just love this album a lot. Um, but it, they don't do it a lot. And then also like, I don't know, it, I, I just have a lot of love for this album. So mm -hmm. uh, metalcore is like, that's 90% of what I listen to. And I, I think it's just the era I grew up in. Cause like the 2010s, that was like when metalcore blew up and everyone was doing it. And that's when I learned that I even liked music was in the 2010s. So um, I, I think that I really latched onto that and I still love it to this day. Uh, but the next song liberates does not do that the chorus is um very i mean he screams the whole way through you okay you cannot tell me that it doesn't sound like he's saying liberate bananas in this song that is exactly <laughs> what it sounds like he's saying that would that would make sense because in the previous track on me and so I, crazy ape and now he's got to liberate the bananas <laughs> yeah exactly uh i've never heard liberate bananas uh, I've always heard liberate my madness, but, uh, your point is I understand and yeah, I'll, now I will surely hear it and I will curse your name for all of eternity for making me hear liberate bananas. Yeah. Um, this is like the, this is a great mid album banger to like pick the energy up one more time. Like we just did tattered and torn and then you had to listen to clean vocals on me inside. So like, let's get back into it with liberate. And, uh, and yeah, I'm, uh, and, and then also like prosthetic, the next song is a real slow roll in. So I, I don't know. I love the composition of how they threw all these songs together on this. Mm -hmm. Well, prosthetic is um, probably one of the best songs to have you commentate on here because it's written about a horror movie. And so you're kind of the, uh, I mean, you have your degree in uh, spookology, do you not? <laughs> I do, indeed. Now I have to. Now I have to look at this. That's so it's um, it's about a movie called The Collector, which I originally thought it was about the movie Collector that came out in two thousand nine. Only to realize that this album came out ten years before, and it was actually yeah. written about the movie Collector from like nineteen sixty or something, like super old. I don't remember. Um, but it's about a guy who collects people pretty much. He kidnaps them. Um, and so it's a dark song for sure. It's got, um, a very creepy sound to it, but I, I like things that put you in the mind of a crazy person. Um, it, it kind of opens your eyes to be like, oh, this is what it's like to think that way. Um, I think that a lot of people, 
say things like, oh, I, I could never even fathom doing this or like, why do people do that? I couldn't even uh, imagine doing that. But I think that when you're honest with yourself and you really look at it, you're like, oh, no, I get it. I would never do that, but I understand. I hope so. <laughs> See, I don't know. See, because for me, like, this is all like, like, I, I think about that kind of stuff all the time. Like, uh... <laughs> okay, so side, side note, tangent. I was talking to my wife the other day um, and she was going through some tough stuff. Um, actually, I'm not going to share this story. It's way too dark. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> now that I, now that I think about it, but suffice it to say, like, uh, like I was like, like she said some dark shit, and I was like, yeah, Did, you mean that's this is the first time that's occurred to you? You've never like dreamt of like this or that? And she's like, what? No, that's horrible. And I was like, oh, so my whole life. <laughs> I've been, a, I've been like, like fantasizing about these horrible things apparently. And I hadn't even realized it, but yeah, uh, this one, this one is, uh, a great long, slow build. Um, this is the second longest song on the record. Um, it feels like the descent into insanity for the record. Like all the previous stuff felt like a lot of hate and anger. And now it just feels like you're going insane. Um, I love uh, that Slipknot does, they've done, they do a few songs. Like it's a recurring theme of theirs to do songs on serial killers uh, and uh, instances of real fucked up deaths and that kind of thing. Um, and that's one of my favorite things in, in metal. All, all my favorite bands. Like I, there, I think that may be like, like the weird through line for me. Like, one of my very, very favorite band, maybe, yeah, w one of my favorite bands of all time is called Dragged Into Sunlight. And uh, I love them because they feature a lot of like serial serial killer uh, audio, um, like taken directly from like quotes from serial killers. And, and also, you know, just the whole, their whole thing. Another one is Fluids. And like, they'll, yeah, it's like, I don't know what it is that's my favorite part is like it has to be dark and disturbing and yeah prosthetics is goes brings the album into that weird place and i love it well i don't want you to feel like you are um some sick uh horrible person because i i mean i think i understand exactly what you mean um and i remember so i was on i i served um a lds mission uh, mm -hmm. just like Bryce, your co-host. Um, and I remember, so I had this companion and him and I both liked Slipknot a lot and we would talk about it. And I remember one time we, we were like helping someone build their roof and we were like sing, singing Slipknot songs while doing it. Um, but anyways, him and I would always have these conversations about like, man, I think about some weird stuff sometimes. I don't, I don't think that I, and you know, we found comfort in knowing that both of us were kind of that way. Um, but yeah, it's, I think that especially, I, I think the people who are like that are drawn to stuff like this because it kind of gives them a way to explore those thoughts um, in, in a confined uh, way, you know, but um, the next song, No Life, I think that, um, you know, moving on here, I think that this song kind of just makes me feel like it spit it out too it's very similar in the way it sounds. It's again, got that um, kind of like rap feel to it. Uh, and you probably won't like this, but I think that the clean vocals are the best part about this song. Now, I don't remember. I don't, so No Life and Deluded, I actually think I accidentally skipped on this playthrough and I thought the album felt really light. So I can't, I can't remember having listened to, I listened to this album two times through today and somehow I missed this song. So I'm sorry, but I don't have any, I don't have any memories of. of That's life. totally okay. You know what? That same thing has happened to um, me and my, my usual co-host, Matt. It happens all the time. We, um, yeah, it's like, something it about like, kind of... you kind of just zone out sometimes on certain songs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, it was either that or, or my kid was screaming and I had to attend to her or something like that. Yeah, well, to be honest, I don't think there's as much to say about that song anyways. Um, moving on to Diluted, I really like Diluted. I think that I, I love the self-loathing nature of the song. I think that it's um, so untrusting and angry at existence, um, which I think is a feeling that comes from like, you know, being beaten down for so long. Um and it's got one of the best choruses in the whole album for me. So this, I've always really enjoyed Diluted. Yeah, this is a, this is a great song. And, um, and this is kind of the point in the album where you feel like it would be a natural end. You're kind of like, okay, we're wrapping it up now because what, this is tw track 12 or something like that. So yeah. what more could you have? You've already packed this thing so full. Um, so everything after this all always to me feels like, a, like a cherry on top. Yeah. I mean, this is a long album and nowadays, well, to be honest, metal is kind of like, uh, you can expect some long albums in metal. I think that comes from the more experimental nature. Um, but uh, n well now that's a kind of a pop thing to do as well. Pop and, and rap you'll have albums that come out with like 20 plus songs on them. Um, so it's not really a metal thing anymore, but um, having like 14 to 16 songs on a, on a metal album is not that uncommon. Um, it does kind of get to the point though, like I, I don't love albums that get this long and I, I like this album, but as a whole, I think that albums that get this long drag out a little too much for me. Yeah. This this one doesn't do what a lot of metal albums will do that long metal album like this isn't like runtime wise this is a pretty short album um i mean especially if you cut out the long song if you cut out scissors um mm -hmm. then it's this is a very standard length um but they're all notable so it that might be what it make, makes it feel a little bit longer is because they're all like pretty you know that you're like oh yeah i remember this one oh yeah i remember this one oh yeah i remember there's none that i really skip so mm -hmm. yeah. all right well the second well actually technically not the second to last song um is only yeah. one and um honestly when i got to this point on the record i forgot how much rap was on this album it um it, it came back again and I was like, man, it, there's more of this. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't think this one was that bad. It kind of, um, it, it got me thinking more of like bands that I actually do like that. that like I, I mentioned earlier, Lincoln park, I've always been a huge fan of Lincoln park with the rapping and the screaming and the singing. Um, I thought it was a great mesh. And so I think that this song kind of does that as well. Um, but I mean, what do you think? It's it's got a little bit of that uh, metalcore feel in certain parts, but mainly new core in this, or not new core, new metal in this one. Yeah, this one. The only note I have for this one is crushing riffs. Like this one's real riffy and great, and mm -hmm. uh, and I like it a lot. Like you just, it's interesting how much energy they still have in this album on this on this song. So yeah, yeah, and I guess there isn't now. There now it seems like the album has what 15 tracks, but technically, if you were to buy the CD, it'd be 14, huh? I didn't even yeah, well, so let's let's talk about that. So the next song is Scissors, and uh, back in back in the day, this used to when you'd buy the album, you'd think that this was the last song, but there's actually a bonus track hidden at the end of this one, so far down, in fact, that it took me several listens through to actually find it yeah um but yeah i bought this um but i uh, bought this album probably just before spotify started becoming a thing and you can you know listen to whatever song you wanted but um before that you just had um the the cd that went all the way to scissors and you kind of scissors is actually my favorite song on the album for sure 100 wow. hands down my favorite <laughs> I think, um, and, and that's kind of crazy because it's um, one of the most experimental and 
it's so long. What is it like uh, eight minutes, eight and a half yeah. minutes, something like that. Yeah. And the singing or the vocals don't even start for a minute and almost two minutes. So it's, uh, you know, it's very different, but I thought that this was the most raw emotional song on the whole album. And as a teenager, I really just connected with it. I thought that um, it's especially that ending where uh, a lot of the lyrics were improvised and the, the screams just get so real. It sounds like he's about to cry at the end. And he even like the, at the very end of the song, it sounds like he throws up. And I, um, when I was learning to scream, in fact, this is one of the albums that taught me how to scream as I was, I was, I would sing along to these ones. And, um, for some reason I would always trigger my gag reflex on accident when I would like push too hard. And so like, I, I felt like I understood the ending, like he was just pushing so hard and didn't really know what he was doing. And it just all came out. No, you're definitely, you're, well, you're a hundred percent right. Uh, so like I said, I've listened to a lot of interviews and uh, while they were recording this, like he was throwing up a lot. I think he, I think the, one of the interviews I listened to was him say, was Corey saying, if I didn't throw up on this album at the end of the track, like if I wasn't going so hard that I threw up, we, we'd, we'd go again, we'd record it. And, and they wouldn't clean up at like one of them accidentally cut their hand. They just left the blood all over the place. There was a dead mouse in the corner of the, retor oh. of the <laughs> room they were recording in. Like it was, it was gnarly and it stunk and it was hot. And, uh, and so, yeah, you definitely hear him throw up because he said he threw up like over and over again on this album. Uh, and so, yeah, for sure. And this one, th that ending, like, well, it's not quite, it's not quite a drum solo. Uh, Joey's, solo with Corey singing along is just crushing like whoo i mean so much percussion coming so fast like i again this is one of these things where people you say slipknot and people got to go oh yeah slipknot okay but even like the craziest death metal drummers even like grindcore drum, like you know these machine people will will point at Joey Jordanson and go, that dude is a, a class of his own at drumming, and this uh, scissors is like proof of that. Like no, there are very few people who could touch Joey rip, uh, rip in peace. Yeah, you know I think Joey actually wrote the vocals to this uh, or the lyrics to this song as well. Um, so yeah, very talented man. The oh, so they, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to ask. So you know how to scream? Yeah. I would love if you would teach me how to scream. I've gone all these years, and um, and it's like, it's the one thing I feel like I could do, but I can't do it. I can't figure out how to do it, and I can't sit through. I can't understand that. I feel like the people who try to explain it in these videos are, are just bad at communicating. Yeah. So, well, to give you a quick little small lesson um, here, uh, to be honest, I feel like I, I never learned the correct way or, well, I feel like I do it right now, but um, when I was learning, you know, you'd watch those videos and they're like, if it's hurting, stop because you're doing right. it wrong. And I always thought like, it hurts every damn time. What do you yeah. mean? Stop. Um, yeah. I think that you just gotta, you gotta let it hurt at the beginning because you don't know what you're doing. You're not going to figure it out until you just find it, you know, find it in your, in your voice. And then it'll eventually stop hurting. But, um, I mean, I can't count how many times I've lost my voice. And, um, I, when I went on my mission, so I learned to scream when I was a teenager, I went on my mission and I, I never did it. I just didn't do it for two years. And then I came home and I had to relearn. Um, and so, I, I think that like the biggest thing I could say is just um, basically just yell at first and let it hurt. And you'll slowly start as you like move your voice around, you'll slowly start finding where it's supposed to be, um, how to make it stop hurting, how to make it sound better. Um, and then this is kind of cheating a little bit, but I, a lot of it, it's in your mouth too. Yeah. I assumed, well, and, and that's, this is actually one of the best, I'm so glad we're talking about this because this is the best part of this album to me is Corey's vocals are 
fucking insane in this album. Like, I can't find, there's so few other albums that you hear somebody losing their mind singing. And this is one of them. Um, but I also hear a guy who's, it just sounds like he's going to blow out his voice uh, mm -hmm. through through the whole thing. Um, now knowing what I know now, you know, knowing what I know now about like screaming and stuff, it can be dangerous, you know? Uh, yeah. That... Well, as far like when I say let it hurt, if you strain yourself, like if you strain a muscle, stop immediately. Like that is the, you do not want to do that. But if you, if you feel like you're tasting blood a little bit or like you're starting to get like a sore throat, I feel like that's fine. Like you gotta, you gotta build up those throat muscles somewhere, but it, yeah, straining a muscle hurts bad and you do not want to sing through that. You learned, you heard it here first folks. So let's wrap this up here and talk about the hidden track, the final track um, on here, which is Eeyore. And uh, this one, so I have two memories of this song that are like grained in, ingrained into my brain, which is one of them. I was listening to this song in my bedroom when I was like 16 or 17 and my dad came in and at that time he did not understand why i listened to metal he hated it that boy ain't right <laughs> exactly so he walked in on me listening to eeyore and he was like i mean the disappointment on his face like he's, <laughs> he's cool about it now like he he understands that like you know that's just something he likes and it's you know um uh, but like back then he was like something some may write about this kid like that's so that's one memory i have about this and the other one i was in church and i was uh i had a little notepad and i was like drawing out uh some of the lyrics of this song on like this monster that i had drawn and um and yeah one of the the girls who was also my age looked over and saw what i was drawing and was like some some may write about this boy so basically wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah um again i don't listen to lyrics i have no idea what the lyrics are about i'm just now for the first time uh let's start i just imagine your dad now being like son do you remember the time that i caught you listening to eeyore by slipknot <laughs> and like, yes dad and he's like i don't cry but I definitely shed a tear that day. I cried that night. <laughs> yeah. Did you? <laughs> no. Uh, oh I'm no, kidding. he didn't. Yeah. But he like, that, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, this song it, it feels. I'm, I'm glad it's not a song. I mean, I don't care. I don't care if it's a, a necessarily a titled song on the album. Uh, but it doesn't fit because it's got this weird like hardcore vibe. Like mm -hmm. it's, it feels like a, like a, like, like this kind of post hardcore, uh, vibe to it, but it's great. Um, I am the great big mouth. I know those words, um, yeah, classic, those, those lyrics, uh, and those are great lyrics. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, this is, a, it's a good, it's, it's, uh, I think I, you know, like so many, uh, hidden tracks, I, discovered this by just you know falling asleep on the bus you know mm -hmm. uh, and just having the cd player going and and then whoa you know a bunch of silence and then i woke, got woken up by it but um doesn't fit with the overall album but it doesn't have to because it's not a titled song on it it's just part of scissors or whatever it is mm -hmm. it almost sounds like a like a metal speed run they're like trying to see how many uh how many times they can say the f word um, in a song, in a short song, uh, and just uh, scream it as fast as they possibly can. Uh, like when you're listening to it, it I, I definitely had to look up the lyrics to this one because it's really hard to understand what he's saying because he's saying it so fast. Yeah, this is the, this feels like the practice to people, people equal shit, mm -hmm. um, which is like, could be their best song. It's uh, pretty great of all of all time <laughs> uh so but this definitely has those vibes um in terms of lyrics and uh and just like yeah just being like uh fuck all this uh which is a lot of of what slipknot is kind of directionless just hate and anger and and angst um and this is this is that in spades so yeah
if people weren't so um and like so many people are like they don't want to listen to metal at all it's not their thing they hate it if if that wasn't like the general public's uh, opinion of metal people equal shit would be the best rave sh- song ever people will go crazy over that song because it's so it's like a it's it's like you can dance to that song but it's so heavy and horrible and yeah, yeah. it's it's fabulous it is a fabulous song if you can get over the title and kind of the weird it's you know it gives you a weird feeling to be listening to a song that's just literally called people equal sign shit. Um, but um, yeah, no, you're definitely right. Just sonically. Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> it's just so great. It's you in order to name a song, people equal shit and have it all about being about have the song be about people equal shit. You have to, and then, and then have it people like it. It has to be fabulous. And it is, it's a yeah. fabulous song. So um, why don't we, we close this out here with just your final thoughts about this whole uh, record um, as a conglomerate and just tell me like, you know, what your, what your thoughts are on it. And then also just while I have you here, thank you so much for, you know, doing this. I, I've had a great time and I thought you've been so, uh, your thoughts on on this record were invaluable i very much appreciate it so why don't you uh, close us out here with with your final thoughts oh well, thank you yeah no thanks for having me um you know you've been a big part of horror movie talk um you've been you know a super fan for a long time and uh you've always supported everything we've done and um i just i'm so thankful to have you know um people like you to talk I never get to talk about this stuff with anybody. Um, and the people who I do talk to about it are all kind of like begrudgingly like, okay, this guy's going to, so I just don't, you know, the end result is I just don't talk about it very much. Um, so I, it's, it's really great to be able to, you know, uh, go over. I mean, as far as my thoughts on this album, like, this is one of the most influential metal albums ever, ever. And again, I do think it transcends genre. Uh, I mean, I mean, it has a lot of, a lot of influence from uh, death metal, from, uh, from new metal, from uh, just uh, even, even black metal. I mean, the layers on this, like they're crazy. Um, it's got rap. It's got, you know, it's got all, it's got so much inside it. And, um, yeah, this is, this, I don't think I'm being, um, I'm being unfair or like just remembering this with too much nostalgia. I think, I think this is, I think this is a genuine, genuinely like big this is a turning point in like the history of metal um and uh i mean it's amazing to me the staying power that they've had like even when they came out and they were a big 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 deal like in 1999 2000 it felt like they were a flash in the pan kind of band you know you look at it and you go that how long can that last and you know you look at similar acts, you know, like mushroom head and they don't, you know, you can't point at any other gimmick band, uh, that, that rests on that gimmick unless they're super talented and because those things don't exist. So rarely will a super talented band also incorporate a gimmick into their act a gimmick as strong as wearing masks and having nine people and layering and layering and layering sound on top of sound on top of sound all these gimmicks though like these are the guys to do it like more sound like they knew how to do it and thank god because like there's so much uh stuff that they've influenced like this is 
I feel like people are embarrassed by this album and I, I don't understand why, because it's crushing. Like it's a crushing album. It's great. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, I don't have, I don't have strong rep. I don't normally like, I put this shirt on. I don't normally wear like metal stuff. I, I don't have tattoos. I'm not like a, a someone you'd look at and typically and go, that's a metal head. I, I just, I, and I never have been. But I've listened to I've listened to metal since I was since I could, um, and uh, and I've listened to just a, always the bleeding edge, um, as far as I can go down that hole, um, and yet still to this day, uh, the self titled Slipknot album is it can hang. So mm-hmm. I think I think this is yeah one of the best metal albums that's ever been made. Yeah, I th- I think um, from what I've heard, a lot of people did not think that Slipknot was going to last uh, further than their first or second album. Um, but I think it was um, Clown who had a, a, I was reading a quote of his where he was basically like, yeah, people didn't get it and people didn't uh, think it was going to last. But I looked at it and like, I couldn't see how it wouldn't last. Right. Like this, it was the perfect storm to be what it needed to be to survive decades. So it's yeah. and they put on a f- fucking phenomenal live show. I mean, I, you, you you don't realize how much you want to be going on uh, on a live show until until you see somebody who just does who just phones it in, you know, and you just and you just go or or even a great act that's just not that interesting. You know, they, they got talent musically, but you just like, okay, so you're standing in one place. You know, I mean, this is a problem with, uh, with like, uh, with like brutal death metal or like slamming brutal death metal. Like it sounds, it's the fucking craziest sound you'll ever hear. But if you watch any of the shows on stage, it's, it's three or four guys standing still and just like, like, it's just like, they're just like, that's all they'll do. the, and the showmanship and the talent in Slipknot is has never been done since I don't I, that I can think of. Mm-hmm. After this, I'm gonna uh, send you a link to a, a band I think you should listen to. Not because I think you'll like it, but because I think that um, they do a lot of what Slipknot does. Uh, it they're uh, I'll send it to you later. But Who basically, is it? they um, it is Sleep Token. Oh, I've never heard of sleep tokens. So they they wear masks. They um they don't reveal their identity. And to the to what I could find, I could never find their identity. Like it's not even online. So it's like pretty well hidden. And um it's it's not metal though. I mean they have like heavier songs, but it's um pretty tame. Yeah. But man, they they commit to the gimmick. Like they it's like they they it's like you're a you're a cult leader, so you get this. They they yeah. call it like a cult, like a religion, and they like uh they stick to that really yeah. hard. Yeah, you know, actually, now that I think about it, some of my very favorite bands uh, are gimmick have gimmicks like this, like Dragged into Sunlight, like they wear like ski masks, and I don't think their identities are are available. Uh, Portal, Australian band, much more, much more gimmicky, like they're like out of a Lovecraft story like that he wears this big clock on his head and <laughs> um oh like i think sun um i think they also wear like robes or something like that i've never i've never seen sun live that's one of the one of the my bucket list bands that i want to see live but i'd be super excited to see what was sleep token yeah sleep token yeah that sounds awesome yeah, I'll I'll send it to you. They've got, I mean, they're so good. I, like I said, they're not they're not heavy at all, but like they have some songs that bring me to tears. They're so good. Ah, oh, that sounds great. All I want to do is feel. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you, thank you so much for doing this with me. I had a great time. Um, you, you and Bryce are both like uh, podcast idols to me. Your your show is so cool. Everyone loves it. You've created such a great community. You know, I. I posted on your uh, Facebook group once and I had, um, what's her name? Glittercore. 
she commented on the on the post and it was like oh my gosh i haven't seen you post on here in a while are you doing okay like is everything good and i was like i can't believe how nice the people are here it's incredible so thank you for for not only coming on the show but having your own show that's created such a had an impact on my life and it's it's just great well thank you i appreciate it that means it means a lot to me yeah man all right well i'm gonna close it out here thank you for listening um we've uh hope we hope you've enjoyed it and uh please stick around because uh, we you know i want to put out more stuff like this um but as always you know subscribe uh we have a spotify go to go to the spotify go to the link i'll put horror movie talk in the in the links down below as well so thank you bye yeah bye <laughs>